structured stories. It was cold that night. I remembered a cool breeze as it brushed through my hair and across my face. Very much complimented by the mild warmth. During this late night, I stood atop a balcony, hands in the pockets of my overcoat, my brow furrowed in anticipation. Far below me were the streets of Angelo City, and directly ahead of me was Spire 17. That skyscraper, it burns in my mind. Between my memories, both good and bad, that single building is a monolith, a catalyst of pain, suffering, and insurmountable regret. From that hollow tower glowed a light so intimidating and powerful that it penetrated every crack, slit, and orifice. It was the beacon that no ship should follow for safety. It was the light from a torch that illuminated nothing. A raging campfire that only made things colder. If I am sleeping, then I see the many shadows upon my bedroom wall as Spire 17. Even if they separate, they shall slowly slither and coalesce. They will form faces both happy and sad. They will voice their grievances and their pain. All howls and screams, all of them directed at me. As the moon above slowly moved through the night sky, seven squad vehicles of the city police force rushed past me. They were flying towards the spire. Soon the tower would be flooded with officers and one man's reign of terror would be brought to an end. Eugene Dawes, a name that had been carried upon the lips of every officer, detective, and PSA in the past six months, leading up to the raid. He was responsible for ten deaths, and we suspected he was also responsible for eight missing persons, given certain variables regarding disappearances. The ten individuals appeared chosen at random, found dead with their brain mods hacked into and forcibly removed. The initial cause of death was either blunt force trauma to the head or a fatal stab wound to the neck. They concluded that some sort of data was likely what he was after, although the purpose of this was lost on them. Later, the police would catch a break. They would eventually trace the killer the Spire 17. The raid went about as well as could be expected. The police breached the Spire from two directions at once. They converged towards the middle of the Spire where they believed Dawes was located. Once they found him, a firefight ensued. Two officers were wounded, but Dawes was confirmed shot and killed. In a single moment, that man's reign of terror was finally at an end. The victims could finally be put to rest and their families could finally have closure. Case closed. No. No, it wasn't that easy. We thought it was case closed. What else was there for us? The monster was dead and the knights could go home and tell the townsfolk they were safe. At least until the next monster showed up. No. No, it was nothing compared to what would come later. It was merely the lightning before the thunder. A week. A week was all it took. It started with a coffee stand worker. They took a knife and butchered a customer, then went on a killing spree. The second was a father of two, happily married with his wife at the peaks of their careers. At least until he threw his whole family from their apartment floor balcony, and the list goes on. As the days went on, people started to get suspicious. They started to spread theories and rumors. We tried to ignore them. We wanted to be ignorant. We didn't want to listen to the writing on the wall. Sure, people lose it sometimes. In someone's life, the timber snaps and all hell breaks loose. But in spite of that, there was one thing we couldn't ignore. It was the fact they were incredibly random. Soon, small blips on the radar became loud red splotches. The police would quickly be overtaken, hospitals would collapse, and people from all walks of life would cower in their homes in fear. 
in fear of an all-reaching hand that slithered through the gaps in doorways, an eye that would shine a dark and waking gaze on the entire city. The number of people who were in fear quickly dropped as it had dawned on them that they needn't be afraid anymore. Their savior was with them now. It was intriguing how it all came about, that is. It was a simple piece of sophisticated malware that snuck in via a wireless update. That same update to every Jasper brand brain mod just so happened to take place the night of the raid. In roughly a week, it nestled in a person's head, carefully changing and influencing how they thought, acted. Once the connection was made, everything breaks down, and from there a new directive is created. It starts as a whisper, cautiously feeling itself through each and every nook and cranny until it finds you and then you're gone. I saw it happen so many times, more than I'd care to recount. People would just slowly slip away. They'd change right before your eyes into a copy, a clone of that monster. It happened to the gal working the diner in downtown. It happened to the police officer on his break. And it happened to everyone on my crew. Now they all march as one, a single collective mind that reeks of death. Now they're all here with me. I woke today, knowing full well that it was over for me. I saw a huge tarp hanging from a neighboring skyscraper across the street. It wasn't there before. Facing my living room window. In big red letters, it reads, We are Dawes. They are all outside the door now. They are here. Everyone. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was episode 19 of Fractured Stories, titled Murder Virus. Originally written and voiced by yours truly, Musical Pumpkin. You know, this one was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be, but quality-wise, I think it turned out pretty well. Like, it has a noticeable increase in quality. At least that's what I see. But anyways. Uh, and this one was cyberpunk-themed, if that wasn't obvious. It deals with a, uh, you could say, a nightmare scenario strongly affiliated with that genre but alas that about wraps it up this was your good friend the musical pumpkin watching over your pumpkin patch stay dope folks and i will see you in episode 20 whenever that may be